So, we've got two changes to discuss. First of all, if you send your mind back to the first part of this series, I know almost a year ago, potentially over a year ago, depending on when I release this video, you'll remember that the initial route, we go from the base, which is the blue marker I've put down, over to the wreck, to the fruit, through the coral tube, and finally back home. Now instead of this, we're going to look at the distances from our base, either to the coral tube or to the wreck. We're going to choose the shortest of those. We're going to activate Go Storage before we leave, which I'll talk about in a second. And then we're going to go through the coral tube, in this instance, that's the closest one, through the coral tube, to the fruit, to the wreck, and then we're going to die. Now, with Go Storage, this death doesn't lose us any resources. The only downside is we're gathering a few less than we might normally do. But it saves us the swim back, which is fairly substantial. Now we're going to go over and talk about Go Storage. Activate a glitch called Go Storage. Don't worry about it, I might talk about it later. So Go Storage is pretty simple. We want to open the storage container and then immediately leave. You'll notice the storage container opens slightly, but as long as your PDA doesn't open at all, you've activated the glitch. And then next time you open your PDA, no matter where you are, you can access the LifePod storage. It does only work the once, so if you open the LifePod storage accidentally, then you have to use the glitch right then and there, because you won't be able to use it again. It is possible on controller, you just have to be very speedy, immediately open the storage locker and then immediately go down to the hatch. It is possible, just a little bit trickier than on PC. Okay, so how are we going to use Go Storage? If you're going to the coral tube first, then immediately after the fruit, you're going to activate Go Storage. Then you're going to put all the items you picked up, apart from one of the creepvine seeds, back in your life pod. If you're going to the wreck first, you're going to do this after the coral tube. Now you can't put a great amount of resources back in your life pod. It's going to be 22 items alongside the one creep vine that you put back in. That's 22 singular items. Or if you then take out the food and water as you're doing the ghost storage, you can put another four. Obviously you can replace any four items for an extra metal salvage if you need. And if you really need, you can put both of the creep vines back and then grab a metal salvage later. I'll talk about that in a second. I did indeed get the two I actually need. Wow, much excited. Did that dog drop a tooth? Did you drop a tooth, buddy? No? Okay, that's fine. And we, we die, but we get to keep one item we had left in my inventory that I picked up after leaving the base, and I only had one of those, so we're all good. So as shown, once we do the final thing, either the scanning of the sea glides if we're going in this direction, or if you go the other direction for, to the wreck first, then you want to die immediately after the coral tube. You're then, as I said in this clip, going to get to keep one of the items that you grabbed. It's going to be the creep vine, if you just left that in your inventory, or if you put it back in the life pod, it's going to be whatever you picked up afterwards, so either a limestone or a metal salvage. And obviously you want to die as quickly as possible. If you're going through the coral tube, you want about 35 air. If you're at a good pace, that should let you die right at the end. If you go to the wreck, it's a lot harder to judge. Hopefully you can manage it, even when the sea glides are quite far away. Okay, and that's the first change. And on to the second change. We're going to look back at our quartz diagram. We're going to add an extra quartz because we're making two and a half solar panels. And that's going to be a yellow quartz, so you can get it at any point in this first resource section. We're also going to change the yellow locker to red because we need it as soon as we're finished with dogs for a new strategy that has arrived recently. And that's going to be very important for that section. And now we're going to carry on with the times that I'm actually meant to be talking about in this video. Get out, get out, get out. I've activated a glitch if you're in a base when it floods the game, things you're both swimming and walking at the same time, so it puts those two speeds together. Pretty fantastic for the running this game. Major going fast, pulled super sea glider, now I need some teeth. So now we need teeth, and to get teeth, we're gonna need doggos. So I'm gonna put on the map here the best doggos, they're in blue. Now if there aren't enough doggos there, you can go to the okay doggos, those are in red. And if there aren't enough doggos there, you can go to the desperation doggos, those are in pink. We're going to need a good amount of doggos. You're wanting about two with nests close together. I'll talk about that in a second. But that is where you're going to be wanting to go from the spawns we've talked about before. Every time a dog picks up a piece of metal, there's a chance it drops a tooth. That chance is 25%. I want four. By uh, 8, 20, 8, 30, something like that. Now I said that the dogs have a 25% chance of dropping teeth. However, if you draw your mind back... 
to the diagram I had before with the pieces of metal, I singled one out. The one in the bottom right is in fact bugged. It does not have a 25% chance of dropping teeth. It in fact has a 0% chance of dropping teeth. This may be fixed in a future update to Subnautica. However, currently it should be avoided, preferably kept in your inventory so the dogs can't find it at all. That chance is 25%. I want four. By uh, 8, 20, 8, 30, something like that. Already got three, so that's pretty good. There's the fourth. I sure. Thanks for making me feel a bit better, Subnautica. So I am here to get teeth, but I'm also here to get a couple other things. I'm here to get three fruit, two vines, three metal salvage, and then I have space for three random small items. Generally, I go for three limestone, but you could pick up some sandstone instead. Now we're going to talk about how to manage the dog AI. So the way this works is that the dogs will pick up metal and put it in their nest. Simple, right? Well, let's dive into it. What is a nest? Well, a nest is wherever they decide to put their metal, and this nest can be anywhere, even out of bounds sometimes. Once a dog has put the metal in their nest, they will then go for the closest piece of metal that isn't in their nest. If, however, there aren't at least four pieces of metal not in their nest nearby, they may go for you or a random fish. If you do see a dog going for you, you want to jump into its mouth and immediately get bitten so they can go back to picking up metal. So to manage this, in general, you want to pick up the metal they have placed in the nest and put it just outside their nest. This means that the dog will want to pick it up again. Of note, generally, two dogs won't have the same nest, so each one may be picking up metal from the other dog's nest. And, if you pick up the metal a dog was going for, it will target you instead. Which means you probably want to get bitten again, so you want to minimise doing this. In addition to this, two mock dogs can go for the same metal, and if one gets there first, the other one will follow it all the way home. If the dog it is following has a nest really far away, I call this a migration, and you'll want to stop it. To stop it, you'll want to slash the dog carrying the metal, who will then drop said metal. In addition to dropping the metal, the dog will move its nest closer to the coordinates 0, 0, 0. These coordinates can be seen on a map here. If, however, the two dogs reach the metal at the same time, they will juggle the metal between their mouths. This keeps going till one dog eventually wins and takes it to their nest. Juggling can be incredibly useful for getting teeth because it's a very large amount of pickups in a short amount of time. However, setting up a juggle on your own is very difficult, so it's recommended instead for quick teeth gathering you constantly move metal from nests slightly out of said nests for the fast pickups. In addition, dog nests aren't necessarily on the ground, and this occurrence creates what we call a best doggo. A best doggo will pick up metal, put it in its nest, and because the nest is above the ground, gravity will cause it to sink and leave the nest, meaning the dog can once again pick up the metal, and these dogs generally manage themselves, which is why they are best doggos. One big thing to remember here is that Subnautica's render distance applies, so metal and dogs don't exist if you're not close to them. This issue is the reason why we stay near dogs while we are picking up metal, as well as being able to micromanage the dogs just in general. The render distance varies depending on your graphics preset, be it low, medium or high. One final thing, dogs' mouths can slightly clip through everything, and teeth drop from the very front of them. This means if you're unlucky, a dog will drop its tooth out of bounds. However, if you hear the tooth drop and suspect this has happened, you can quickly rescue the tooth. As you have super sea glide at this point, you can slightly clip through the floor and quickly rescue the tooth before it sinks into the abyss. And that's essentially everything on managing the dog AI. On this planet grows in unusually distinct and diverse ecological biomes. Further study recommended. So I need a rupture like the one that's behind me. If I didn't have the rupture, I wouldn't be able to do this deconstruction section because at some point the space would stop being flooded and that'd be very bare. So without this rupture that's spewing out water, this piece of base will stop being flooded once I deconstruct the sections that do have ruptures with water spewing out of them. You can also get a rupture that is a fake rupture. This is not spewing out water, it just has the rupture texture. And this will mean that if you deconstruct everything, your base will still not be flooded because it isn't a real rupture, so keep an eye out for that. The reason I talk about this now is because I'm deconstructing the windows for two glass to make the upgrade to do two tank in a second, and by doing so, no new ruptures will appear. Okay, carrying on. Upgrading my two tank right now is the goal. There you go. That game was in here, that's this. Other game was in here, that's everything else. 
Uh, so eight, one, seven. So as I said, the goal of this section is to make the upgrade to 2 tank. To do that, we're going to make some resources, and we're also going to make some resources for later. So we're going to make a fiber mesh, two silicon rubber, two lubricant, a metal salvage into titanium, and the high capacity O2 tank. We're also, to make the high capacity O2 tank, going to grab a silver from one of our lockers, and we're also going to grab a flare for flare storage in a second. And once the O2 tank crafting has started, you're going to want to dump essentially everything in the right locker, to have a free inventory for the resource collection that's going to come up in the geyser. Activate a glitch called Fair Storage. You use a flare, then try and open a locker. You can't access that locker. Morgan and Blitzkrieg, thank you for the luck. Next time you do open your PDA, though, you'll be able to access it no matter where you are. And that's the explanation for Flare Storage. Pretty simple, exactly what I did right there. And also before this next resource section, you're going to want to keep in mind your counts. So you want to keep in mind how many copper you have, and then minus that from 10. So if you had two copper, your copper count would be eight. That's how much copper you're gonna need in a second. You wanna keep your metal count in mind because you wanna to get to nine metal. So if you have three, you're gonna want six. And you're also gonna keep in mind how many sandstone you got above the usual amount of sandstone. So you picked up an extra sandstone that we didn't talk about in these last three videos. You're gonna have that count as one. And that's it. That's the end of the tutorial for this section. Only one and a half minutes. Maybe we'll get to the end in about five years. Who knows? Thank you very much for watching. I hope that helped. Ta-ra.